This building in Moore Street is now the Chokkyol, where many local children today attend traditional music and dance lessons. For nearly 200 years, it was the local Church of Ireland. Music classes take place in the shadow of the memorials to the local Vandeleur landlord family, who failed their tenants in their time of need. Behind the 1813 church building lies the original medieval church, which gives Kilrush its name. The churchyard has been used as a burial ground since pre-Reformation days. A soup kitchen was set up here at the front of the churchyard by the local members of the Religious Society of Friends, better known as the Quakers. The local Church of Ireland rectors passed by this soup kitchen daily on the short walk from their glebe house to the church. During the famine in May of 1847, the then rector of Kilrush, William Young, himself fell victim to fever and died. In later years, the soup kitchen building was converted to use as a Sunday school. Portions of two of the original walls still stand, as does the outline of the entrance. The soup kitchen site and the old churchyard have been recently cleared by Kilrushan District Historical Society. This society was established in 2012 and among its initial objectives are the restoration of this churchyard, which is now nearing completion, and the commemoration of those who became victims of death, emigration or eviction in and around Kilrush during the famine. The soup kitchen is clearly marked on old maps, but with the passage of time, the local memory of a famine site in the churchyard has evolved into a tradition of another famine mass grave in this very location. Many of those who fell victim to the famine in Kilrush were buried in Shanakail on the western outskirts of the town. We are looking here at the road from Kilrush Town and Kilrush Workhouse to Old Shanakail Burial Ground, just over a mile away in the townland of Ledmore West. During the Great Famine, this bleak roadway witnessed some very harrowing funeral scenes. Between 1845 and 1852, many inmates perished in the workhouse from causes such as dysentery, fever and consumption. For example, John Kelly, aged 24, came in to die, suffering from consumption. Kate Galvin, aged six months, was described as a mere starveling. Edmund Driscoll, aged 30, was brought to the house in a dying state. Their bodies and thousands of others were transported in reusable coffins on the short journey to the cemetery and dropped through the bottom of the coffin into one of three large pits. Many were buried without the benefit of minister or mourners. The empty coffins were returned to the workhouse in readiness for the next funeral. Today there is a memorial garden here to the memory of those who died during the famine, along with a memorial cross. The names of those buried here were not recorded on any memorial stone or marker, but lists of the names of those who died in the workhouse are in the surviving records. While detailed personal memories of the famine in Kilrush have gradually faded from the local oral tradition and been rendered less reliable with the passage of time, Pauper's Key is one man-made feature of the town which in its name preserves specific memories of famine times. This key is located in Leadmore East townland beside Kilrush Marina, which was formerly known as Kilrush Creek. The recently deceased local centenarian Jack Dunleavy recalled hearing in his youth that paupers had gathered here during the famine to look for work, for food, or for passage to the new world. Others say that the bodies of paupers who starved to death during the famine were collected here before being brought to the mass grave nearby in Shanak Isle. Russell's store, which stood in this quay, served as one of six auxiliary workhouses when the main Kilrush workhouse became overcrowded. The site later housed a factory which made fertilizer from seaweed, with a plaque bearing the inscription that more auxiliary culinary department was re-erected on the factory. The roads across Clare were poor and the West Clare Railway was still several decades in the future. So in famine times, Kilrush relied on the Shannon Estuary for transport and for commerce. Sailboats and the then newfangled steamers transported goods and people between here or Kappa just across the creek 
and further destinations such as Tarbert and North Kerry, which were directly across the estuary, Limerick at the head of the estuary to the east, and New World ports beyond the mouth of the Shannon to the west. The main outbound cargo comprised emigrant traffic, and the main inbound cargo at the height of the famine was Indian meal for relief of the starving. Starving people walked from all parts of the Kilrush Poor Law Union to look for relief and food at Kilrush Workhouse. Those coming from the west shortened the journey by taking a ferry across the mouth of Palnasherry Bay. On December the 12th in 1849, at Camog, on the western side of the mouth of the bay, 41 people were drowned when their ferry boat capsized within feet of the shore. They had come from the western parishes of Kilbalion and Moyarta, and to travel to Kilrush earlier that day to seek relief at the workhouse. As none was forthcoming, they walked this lonely road in a starving and destitute condition to catch the last ferry back to Camogue, only to meet their doom within yards of the shore. On the evening of December the 12th, 1849, the last ferry left Cadencalla for the return journey to Camogue Point at the other side of Paulnesherry Bay, with over 40 people on board, carrying well above its normal complement of passengers. Within a few feet of the landing, the boat suddenly capsized, and all the passengers were thrown into the cold water of the bay. Most of the passengers were on the return journey from the Kilush workhouse. After failing to get help from the border guardians, they had no choice but to return to their homes. The alarm was raised by Captain Cox, who lived nearby and with his own boat he rescued four people, two boatmen and a woman and her child. The following morning 33 more bodies were recovered and some days later uh, other bodies were recovered. After the inquest and inquiries it was estimated that 41 people in all had drowned. Most of the remains recovered at the site were later buried in Kynagalak Cemetery. It is hoped to erect a memorial to these victims of the famine at Camogue in 2013. St Patrick's Terrace today stands on the one-time site of the main Kilrush Union workhouse. The terrace is still surrounded by the original boundary wall of the workhouse site. This workhouse witnessed terrible deprivation and deaths on an almost cataclysmic scale. It was eventually supplemented by six auxiliary workhouses around the town, including Russell's store at Pauper Ski. A large amount of documentary material from the workhouse survives. Some of this has been used as source material for a recent exhibition on the famine put together by Clare County archivist Rini Franklin. Other famine era artefacts have been found in the gardens of St Patrick's Terrace. Some of these artefacts could form part of an expanded exhibition to coincide with the commemoration. Across the road is the Associated Fever Hospital, which today forms part of Kilrush Community Hospital. The main street of Kilrush, Francis Street, is named after Lady Frances Vandeleur, who died in 1833. Her son, Crofton Moore Vandeleur, chaired the ineffectual Kilrush Board of Guardians until stripped of his position at the height of the famine. Francis Street itself vies with O'Connell Street in Dublin and with the main streets of Ballymahan and Strokestown for the title of Ireland's widest street. It runs from the Town Hall, where the Board of Guardians met, and the Maid of Air and Monument in memory of the Manchester Martyrs, both at the eastern end, down to Pauper's Quay at the western end. The street can easily be closed off for major public events as alternative routes are plentiful. The Georgian houses which line the street mainly provide office accommodation so the street can be closed on a Sunday afternoon with minimal disruption to local commerce. Kilrush is a town rich in history, a history tinged with tragedy but a history that it wishes to commemorate in an appropriate manner in 2013.